am a warrior, a sword singer, a second level Ansai. In my cradle I could form the Shihai, the spirit sword, the mystical blade. Mine made of pure fought serpents intertwined with vines of roses to form the blade. As early as I can remember, I wanted to be a singer, to feel the hunger of the blade in my hands, to feel it come alive and take my enemies. I am told our people were artisans and poets long ago in our desert homes. Here in the new home, now known as Hammerfell, many of us have returned to those ancient ways. But to me there is but one way, the way of the sword. The order of sword singers follow a strict martial philosophy on sword mastery, and in seeking strength in mind, body and soul, the Yakudans discovered a powerful magic. A magic so powerful that it supposedly had the ability to destroy an entire continent, sinking it into the sea, forcing the Yakudans to migrate to Tamriel, to the land we call Hammerfell. Behold the Shihai Shen Shei Ru, the spirit sword, Contrary to popular belief, the discovering of this warrior magic did not come to fruition on the back of sheer brutality. Otherwise, every band of savages on Tamriel would be able to manifest blades from their souls. No, the Yakudan people were primarily artisans, poets and scholars, but the ever-evolving strife in their homeland made the way of the sword inevitable. The song of the blade through the air, through flesh and bone, its ring against armour. It was an answer to their prayers. The way of the sword, and thus the magic called Shihai, was not founded in the pursuit of destruction. It was instead done in the search of enlightenment. Legendary heroes like the famous Frandar Hunding sought to unravel the mysteries of existence by treading the perilous paths of the sword. The people of the blade kept their poetry and artistry in building beautiful swords woven with magic and powers from the unknown gods. The greatest among them became known as the Ansai, or the Saints of the Sword. Each of these began their own training schools teaching their individual way of the sword. Ansai of the highest virtue wandered the countryside, engaging in battle, righting wrongs, and seeking to end all strife. So while most manifestations of magic on Mundus are discovered and mastered by scholars and academics, the art of sword singing was no different. They were equal parts warrior and poet. The question becomes, can masters of war and blade successfully keep such powerful sorceries under control? Or is practice of the art guaranteed to see entire worlds sink into the sea? Hey guys, it's Drew here and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. Today we're going to be exploring a manifestation of magic that very few modern mortals would have seen with their own eyes. This magic is more myth than reality in the fourth era, but remnants still exist to this day, mostly in the desolate ochre expanses of the Alakir Desert. We can thank the cultured Yakudans for the resources we have on their sacred arts, because were they to be illiterate brutes like many wrongfully suggest, the way of the sword would be lost to the ages. In this video, we'll learn all there is to know about the fabled Yakudan sword singers, their teachings, and their spirit magic. Take heart, O illustrious majesty, for your people are red guards, which means they come easily to the way of the sword. And once they have their hands once again on the hilts of blades, and learn to quote once more from the Book of Circles, they will be a match for any folk in all the round world, be they ever so numberless. In ancient times, long before the regatta reached the shores of Tamriel, the Yakudans were known for their artistic and academic pursuits. Unfortunately, ongoing tensions between their leaders caused the continent to be ravaged by civil war. The people took up arms for their respective provincial lords, who later became known as Yakida warlords. Constant infighting persisted for three centuries, yet the people maintained their reverence for the arts. Many warriors attempted to reconcile their pacifist crafts with their warring lifestyles, until eventually, as I mentioned earlier, the Yakudans discovered a philosophical underpinning to give meaning to all the violence. And thus the way of the sword was born. Just as their poems, songs and art were spiritual creations, so too were their swords, forged beautifully, woven with magic. Just as the swords turned into works of art, their stances and swordplay became akin to dances, martial and disciplined, yet elegant and exuberant. 
In crafting such brilliant blades, these sword singers believed that the sword was superior to other types of weaponry, and were devoted to using it exclusively. Anything else would only lead to confusion in their path to seek mastery. This budding artistic endeavour left its mark upon the land in the form of magnificent temples, called Halls of the Virtues of War, and the Yakudans who embraced the Song of the Blade also recognised and venerated the warrior gods. There's Onsi, who showed mankind the means to pull their knives into swords. There's Diagna, an avatar of the mighty Hoonding, who was instrumental in the Yakudan men's efforts to defeat the Yakudan elves called the Left-Handed Elves. He showed the men how to forge Orichalcum arms and armour. And then there's Leki, the goddess of aberrant swordsmanship. She taught the sword singers to span beyond the conventional ways of war, learning new skills like the ephemeral feint. The way of the sword took on new initiates as young as 11 years old. The males were known as the Brothers of the Blade, while the females were called Maidens of the Spirit Sword. Women were no strangers to battle in Yakuda, just as they were no strangers to art and poetry. In these early days, regardless of their search for enlightenment, you could easily argue that the way of the sword and their magical blades were hardly unique. In essence, they'd simply learned to enchant weapons, a practice in no way exclusive to the dark-skinned warriors many leagues west of Tamriel. But in seeking enlightenment, and embracing the metaphysics of the art of war, the greatest warriors to follow the way of the sword were led to a magic never before seen on Nern. These warriors were called the Ansai, the Saints of the Sword, and their magic was called the Shihai. All sword singers learn through their intense training and devotion to the gods of war and the way of the sword, the forms of discipline that allow the creation of the spirit sword. This is a simple form of magic or mind mastery, whereby an image of a sword is formed from pure thought. The sword singer forms the sword by concentrating, and it takes shape in his hand. It is usually a pale thing of light, misty and insubstantial, a thing of beauty perhaps, or a symbol of devotion to the way and the gods, but no weapon. However, those ansi of the highest level and sensitivity, and those with talent in magic, can in times of stress form a spirit sword, a shihai that is far more than light and air. It is an unstoppable weapon of great might, a weapon that can never be taken from the owner without also taking his mind. At first glance, the process of channeling a spirit sword seems very similar to conjuring bound weapons. But in most cases, bound weapons are not ethereal or translucent like they appear in the fourth era Skyrim. In the case of bound weapons, you are simply making a pact with a Daedra from the realms of oblivion to temporarily serve you. The weapon itself isn't particularly magical, it's more the arcane binding agreement that is magical. But with spirit swords, the Ansai materialise a weapon built from nothing more than their own willpower and dedication to the tenets of the way of the sword. There's no quick incantation, ready-made to be uttered without any understanding of the words. No, this can only be achieved through insurmountable mental fortitude and intense training and meditation. Subscribing to the precepts of sword singing did not guarantee an initiate would rise to the ranks of the Ansai, and the spirit sword only manifested to the very best. With intense devotion to the gods of war, unbreakable piety in the face of doubters, and unyielding focus and skill, it is said that those who achieved Ansai status were more than mortal. In rare instances, the Shihai formed for gifted young individuals, and in other cases, the spirit sword appeared to warriors enduring great stress. This celestial power seemed to be fueled by faith and devotion, rather than mastery of any texts or spells. It contradicted all of the accepted norms among the magical academics in the arcane institutions of Tamriel. It was as if the Ansai could transpose the very air around them, replacing the arcane light of Aetherius, which surrounds all things, with tangible power. First ranking Ansai could summon spirit swords that were described as pale, misty, insubstantial, and as if it was made of light. Second ranking Ansai, however, their mastery meant that their spirit swords were unstoppable weapons of great might that could cut down foes like a scythe through wheat. Ansai of the highest virtue, like the legendary Frandar Hunding, wandered the countryside engaging in battle, righting wrongs, and seeking to end all strife. To them, manifesting the Shihai was said to have come as naturally as breathing. The Ansai entered battle unarmed, relying on their sheer willpower to smite down their foes. 
The only way a challenger could unarm a wielder of the spirit sword would be by destroying the mind of the wielder. Frandar Dohunding Hel Ansai no Shira was the greatest sword singer to ever live. After the War of the Singers, in which the Emperor Hira sought to eradicate the sword singers, Hunding led the surviving 20,000 singers away from Yakuda to the distant land now known as Hammerfell. After his departure, the annihilation of Yakuda occurred, and the entire continent sank into the sea. Legends tell that it was in fact a rebel group of Ansai still inhabiting Yakuda who brought on the cataclysm. Such was the intensity of their power. Before his death, Frandar documented his search for enlightenment in the Book of Circles. To this day, every household in Hammerfell features an alcove dedicated to Hunding's legacy. In his book, he details the process of creating magical swords, just as the warrior gods had commanded long before. He also speaks of the training regimes and martial techniques of the sword singers, and then he covers the four essential skills every Ansai must master. Discipline, devotion, wisdom, sacrifice. In the season of life in which I marched beneath the sun's height, before the power of the gods did I kneel. I dedicated myself wholly unto the spirit of the sword to forge my Shihai, which I would wield for all my future days. A magic centered around devotion as opposed to study. You can see how using the spirit sword would produce unpredictable results, with power deviating depending on the warrior and their favor with the warrior gods. The rumors of Yakuda's decimation in a mighty magical cataclysm makes far more sense now. With Hammerfell conquered by the Yakudans, the time for war was seemingly at an end, and the Red Guards began to forget the teachings of Hunding and the Ansai. Masters capable of channeling the Shihai became mythical beings, more rumor than reality. Legend tells that the Shihai was lost for good when Derek Hallin and his Ansai companions defeated the Goblin Plight by hurling their swords into the void, destroying the Shihai forever. By the mid-second era, humoring the idea that the Shihai existed was considered absurd, and scholars called the magic superstitious nonsense. In the words of Hallin, the man who ended the Ansai, we chose the blades and destroyed the beasts, but as a result, the Shihai, our spirit swords, were forever destroyed. Centuries of wondrous tradition were snuffed out. I must bear that weight always. But hope is not lost. If the Shihai was discovered through devotion and manifested as sheer willpower in sword form, there is no reason why Hallin's sacrifice would destroy the entire concept of the Shihai. It seems more likely to me that when belief in the art dissipated and the spirit sword became a fictitious tale, there was simply not enough devotion present to summon it. Those warriors who live by the Book of Circles and believe with their entire being that the Shihai awaits them, they will be the ones to bring about the magic's resurgence. The spirit swords may be forgotten, but they are not extinct. The Shihai is locked behind four doors. Discipline, devotion, wisdom, and sacrifice. And there you have it guys, the warrior's magic, the Shihai of the sword singers. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks so much for watching, I've been Drew, and I'll see you in the next one.